Mike Leck and welcome to Adventures in Scale Modeling. Classic automobiles and nostalgia go hand in hand. The vintage automobiles around us here arouse memories not only for the cars themselves, but for the times they occupied our roads and highways. Take this 1939 Mercedes, for example. This was a gift from Adolf Hitler to Joseph Stalin, definitely assuring its place in history. These vintage automobiles make great use of chrome and accessories such as the bumper, the horn, and the grille to accent its large body style. Later on in today's show, we're going to have the great opportunity to meet with classic car collector Richard Kuhn. He's going to teach us a little bit more about these great cars. Chrome also plays an important role in model building, and we're going to learn how to apply chrome plastic parts to models as we build the 1932 Ford Vicky. But for now, let's leave this fine museum and begin building our own vintage car in scale. The modeling techniques and skills we're developing provides us with the basics for successful model building. The classic Ford Vicky we're going to build today gives us an opportunity to study the fine details of our model while duplicating the original remarkably close. Our master model builder, Ron Cole, is downstairs in the museum workshop. Let's get on and join him and begin building this vintage automobile. Putting together an antique car sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Ron, where are you at on the model? Well, Mike, I'm just cutting these chrome parts off the sprue. Okay, where are you going to put those? Well, they go on the engine. Yeah, but I see you have two engines sitting there. What's the situation here? Well, the kit contains two different engines. One, a customized engine, and the other one was the engine that would be standard in the regular car. Ah, so these chrome parts go right onto the engine itself, huh? Yep. Okay, now, are you just going to be able to glue those right onto the engine? Is there any preparation we have to do? Well, you, you, when you're using uh, liquid cement, you can't have any chrome on the gluing surface because the cement won't touch it. So you have oh, to... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, so you're scraping that off of there. Now, can we use, like, let's say, the emery board or sandpaper on those also? Yeah, Okay, sure. well, let me give it a try here. I'm going to try with my emery board to take some of that chrome off there. Basically, what you're telling me, then, is the chrome is similar to paint. It won't adhere to itself, nor will it adhere to the paint. We have to bear up this plastic. What do you think? Did I do a good job there? Yeah, that looks good. Okay, well, let me get a little bit more on the one side there. Okay, we ready to put this onto the engine? We also have paint on the engine piece that we also have to scrape off. Oh, that's right. We can't glue it to the paint. So let me see what you're going to do there. All right, just scrape it off. Now, is it important that we get all of that paint off of there, or can well, we, like... The more paint you get off, the better gluing surface you'll have, so... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, looking good. Now, why'd you blow on that like that? Well, you get bits of paint and plastic and whatever curling up, so you don't want to get that in your oh, way. Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, you're scraping it off of there. That's important to keep in mind, because we have two painted parts. You want to make sure that those painted parts are scraped clean, down to the bare plastic. Paint will not stick to paint, nor will the chrome, that we just learned here from Ron. So make sure you clean it up with your molly knife or with the emery board, like I did with the other chrome piece of part. Well, it looks like we're ready to glue, do some gluing there. How about if you just get it out there and put it on there? I'm anxious to see what it looks like complete. Sure. Well, this, for this, we're not going to use the uh, brush in the, in the glue. We're going to use a much smaller brush because it's a very okay. small gluing surface. All right. Gluing that on there. And I see you're, it's almost like you're painting the glue on there, isn't it, Ron? Mm-hmm. Okay, now you're going to take the chrome piece, put it on. Ah, looks good. Hey, listen, I did the other chrome piece. Let me have a chance at it, too. Sure. I'll take your brush here and the glue. So we don't use the applicator that's in the jar at all at this point because it's just too thick, you think? That would be your opinion. Well, the brush is too big and it's too, too small a glue okay, area. Okay, so now I have a very fine brush here. Hand me the engine. I'm going to take some glue here. And I'm going to... Oh, that piece fell off of there. Looks like we have to re-glue that. I'm going to have to put a little glue on here. Now, when those pieces fall off like that, is it because I took it from you too quickly and we didn't let the glue set up, or what? Well, we should hold it there for a few minutes, let the glue set up on both surfaces, and then tape it on and let it sit for a while. Okay, well, I'm going to put some more glue on the other one here. Here's a situation where we have to really practice some patience, because this glue just does not set up real quick for us. And Ron's suggesting that we take this and we just, what do you think, hold on here, 5, 10 seconds, 20 seconds? And it, just like this? I'm going to just hold it tight for a little okay. while. A few, few seconds should do, and then All make right. sure you well, put hey, tape or something. You're right, it is. Okay, well, I'm going to set this aside to dry, because, you know, I noticed you have 
two car bodies sitting there. One is all taped up and the other one isn't. Can you explain those to me? Yeah, well, this, uh, this first piece here, now this whole piece is a solid piece of uh, plastic the way they give it to you. And uh, the sides of this are blue, but the seat is going to be the, the light gray color. So instead of going in there with a brush and having to hand paint that, we want the advantage of being able to use a, a spray can. Let me take a look at that. I see that you have this all completely masked off here. This is just masking tape on here, correct? Mm -hmm. And you have it so that even, even the pieces that will not be exposed to the white are covered. And I can see the seat, of course, at this point, it's blue. What are we going to do? Spray paint it? Yeah. Okay, why don't we get to it? Which color are we going to use? I have some gray here. Is that yeah, the color you're using? That's the color. Okay, well, you're the expert. Why don't you take it? I'll shake the can up for you. You give it a shot. Let's clean the area off here. Yeah. We'll make sure it's clean. Okay, let me get my brushes out of here. I'll stand off to the side. Oh, testing it out. Oh, okay. Let me see it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You want to get the back also? Well, I want to get the front down under here. So I want to get it from all angles because you can never... Oh, okay. Be too careful. Yeah. Let me have a look at that. Oh. Yeah. oh, I see you missed a spot. Can I get it for you? Sure, go ahead. All right. So I just hold it out here like this and take the can and give it a shot. Well, that's pretty easy. Wow. So how long do you think it'll take? A few minutes to dry? Put it aside right now? What do you think? Well, that's flat paint, so when that turns flat, right now it's glossy because it's wet. When it turns flat, then it'll be dry enough to work with, but don't touch it still. Okay, well, I'm going to set it aside here because, you know, you have another technique here that I'm interested in learning about, and that's those seats. Can I take a look at the seats? Sure. The two seats you have there now. You have, uh, you have one there that's not even painted yet. Can I ask you a question on, on that seat there? Sure. Hand that to me because I want to show this. Look what you have here. Now, this is not a, this is a sprue, but is that how that seat comes? What's the advantage of doing this? Well, you're not going to see the bottom of the seat, so I can stick a piece of sprue or, or glue anything like that to it to hold onto the seat. It makes it easier to paint, easier to handle. Oh, a very important tip. Don't throw those sprue pieces out too quickly, because if you get a seat like this where you're going to have to paint it, you can just glue a piece of the sprue right to the underside where you're never going to see it, and it gives you a great little way to hold in this seat here so that it's perfect. Okay, now what do we do? We're going to spray paint this seat, or what are we going to do? Well, sure. All right, well, I want to see you do it. Go ahead. Now, that is great. This is the same thing. Make sure you get all angles. Ah, oh, that's great. Okay. Be sure not to put the paint on too thick. All right. That just makes it take longer to dry? Or? Well, it'll run all over the place. So oh, okay, okay. You don't want to hide too much of the detail. All right, well, my next question revolves around the seats that you already have painted. Why don't you lay that down in the dry, because I'm interested in knowing how did you get these seats. Let me see these. You've got one seat here that is completely gray, yet the other seat has a blue stripe to it. Now, what's the situation here? Well, that's just taking uh, blue paint after it's painted... Uh, the gray color, and just using a small brush and painting the inside. Okay, well, I want to see you paint the top part of this chair, and I'm going to paint the bottom part, because I okay. want to pick up this technique also. Again, you have that piece of sprue uh, glued onto there, so it's perfect. Go ahead. Let me see you paint it up. Just regular blue paint here. Mm -hmm. this, this same blue paint is the paint that matches the car body? Yeah. Okay. So I want to make sure that it matches. This takes a steady hand. Okay, it's looking good. All right. Now, is this a technique that, that you pick up along the way? Where do you learn all this stuff at? Well, it just takes a, a steady hand and a little patience practice, basically. Okay. Wow. How long have you been modeling at this, doing models like this, Ron? Uh, since I was six. Oh, you're 18 now? Mm hmm. My goodness. 60% of your life in the model building. What certainly is paying off because a lot of these models you're building here are really great looking. Hey, let me give that a try. All right. I'm interested in trying my hand at this. I think I have a pretty rock steady hand. Let me give it a try. So I'm just going to take my paint, go down along right here like this. All right. Steady hand. All right. If you mess up, don't worry about it. You can always touch up the gray later on. Oh, well, that's important to keep in mind, too. Because I, if I don't have a steady hand, it's okay. All right, well, let me put this aside to dry here. Okay, I see that you have uh, another part over there that I'm interested in seeing, and that is the two car bodies. Can you explain those to me at all? Sure, well, the, this body here, let's, let's look at this one first. 
This one here, this will be for the, uh, the standard engine that was normal on the car. Okay, now what's so different about this one from the other one? Well, this one, this is for the, for the bigger engine, but more importantly, this one has been dry brushed with silver to oh, highlight. Oh, I see. So something like that, you can just use a regular brush and do some dry brushing? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you prepare a few more parts, and dry brushing is one of the first things we'll do when I come back, because right now...